Yeah, first, I mean, does anyone have questions they want to ask at this point? Twelve of you. <laughs> I have just a comment, actually, mm -hmm. on your experiment, experiments on the sun. Yes. I was really attracted by your gold bear uh, variation okay. of bank. <laughs> Because I think it's really interesting that you made it really slow. Yeah. And it reminded me of when you're learning to play a musical instrument. And it made me feel really, really frustrated. Yeah. Because I remember I had to play really slowly. Note, note, note. And you get this. I want to speed up. I want to play it really yeah. well. So I think it was really interesting. Uh, uh, that's <laughs> wonderful to hear. Because uh, that is... Uh, uh, because when you're learning to play... Uh, it, it, that's exactly what I'm uh, trying to do, right? that, because when you're learning to play, you're trying to get your body to get the grip on time, and that suits that piece perfectly, so I'm, I'm happy for that comment. Yeah. It's also a reaction to the people we just had, uh, the two sine waves, and yeah. 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 combined them in the room, in our own ear yeah. and everything, reminded me of the pointillism. Yeah. Surat paintings where oh, the colors yeah. are combined, not on the canvas, but yeah. in the eye. In the eye, yes. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wonder, do you have these sound pieces online somewhere else where one can listen to them? Yeah, the, the, m m m most of them. Okay. Uh, I th not the piano piece, the last one. Uh, but some of them are on my jespenorda.com. Okay. Yes, uh, you can find it. It's a, it's a Vimeo link somewhere. Where I think you can. Oh, you can. I can show you. We may find some other sources like similar to it. Uh, a few, a few things occurred to me in terms of themes that happened this afternoon. Um, like everyone seems to be. Least, is that, right? Not here. Anyway, uh, the idea of uh, breaking things into fragments which is definitely something you're doing in your work. And, um, uh, this degree of abstraction in all the work. And then, I mean, one thing that is probably not so, so surprising in, in the digital, but uh, issues around ontology seem to be consistent all afternoon with all the talks and all the presentations. You know, so there seems to be like digital media is really being used to... Uh, you know, deconstruct certain phenomena. Um, you know, I mean, that's true with the sound pieces, uh, with uh, the somatic dance stuff as well, I think. Um, and so I'm wondering about, um, and, uh, this did come up a little bit, but the idea of creative practice as a research method, is, is that something that's important to everyone? So do you think of your practice as a research practice or, or or no, an artistic practice, primarily, or do you see a difference? Anyway. <laughs> that was... So, what was that question? Uh, well, think, uh, um, thinking about creative practice as a research method, which mm -hmm. I mean, you did kind of address a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, whether I mean, what, do you privilege one or the other, or is it even a, an important question? Um, uh, whether you view your practice as research or creative anymore. Because I think that's fairly consistent, in, in, especially in, in, the, in the digital, that people think of the practice as research-driven. And I mean, j just by the fact of it being digital, there is a, a, a sort of deg or a degree of uh, research going on within the media, you know, uh, that's addressed back to the media. <laughs> Good answer. Um, I, I was just thinking, I can um, say uh, something that uh, I often find myself happy with a piece uh, when uh, there's nothing else to it. And uh, what I mean is that when I start working with this, I, I often have a lot of aesthetics and ideas about aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And those ideas about aesthetics kind of kind of feel obsolete or in the way, almost. And in that sense, I could be, uh, sometimes I feel happy when, and, and I, I start to feel a little bit myself like a researcher because I try to remove all the aesthetics yeah. and present this, this is, in a way. So that's 
So I, I was just thinking about that when we were. So in that way, I've been. Oh, I don't know if that's an answer to your question, but. No, uh, uh, yeah, uh, there's no real answer. Uh, uh, I'm not looking for an answer. It's more. On the opposite side, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I create an intervention, I begin to feel like an artist again, yeah. you know, because then it suddenly leaves this kind of realm of, of you know, organizing everything and getting the teachers and the children, you know, everything organized and the devices out, and then, in the sense that you know, it's the same feeling that I have mm -hmm. coming from the, kind of the opposite side. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and I don't think all creative practice is a research method. For me, it's important to allow for creative practice to, to cover a broader terrain, and some portion of that will occupy the, the domain of, of research, artistic research. But I think that for creative practice to be artistic research, there are other criteria, uh, a different engagement with methodology and, and mm -hmm. with depth of, of concept. and. Uh, a certain sort of reflexivity that doesn't need to be there if we're just making work as just making work as an artist. So, so different stakeholders. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I just want to say that I think that uh, for me, working for so many years as an academic, it's sort of through a long process of moving away from theater and moving into my study of literature and then being trained as a traditional academic and writing dissertations and <laughs> working on other things. For me, it was um, really thinking about other ways. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, the, the research sort of came first, but through the creative interventions, it's a way to rediscover some of the things that I just felt like I, I just couldn't capture with the, the dry research. I mean, we've had these conversations and worked together and, and, and for, for that reason. But I think it's, um, I, I would agree that so you don't necessarily want to make everything creative into research, but I think that the creative intervention is a way for me to help, especially when I'm dealing with some of these issues, these ontological issues. We're talking about things about bodies and knowing and tactility and movement and dynamic. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, capture those. And it seems anti, you know, or counterintuitive to, to write about these in um, dry academic terms all the time. Of course, you need to be able to do both. I think, uh, I think something which I missed and which I only wanted to uh, I, I produced over 20 um, actions, events, scene, art, and um, at least it's the moment when the, the piece is ready or when the, the scene is ready and clean, when you present it, uh, where you can release. And, and this was something which at least I, I, I feel this doesn't work. It's had nothing to do with really organic life. Uh, when I'm not can um, when I'm not can be creative in the way how I produce, if I cannot decide the way until it's ready, if I only feel um, yeah, if I do it however, um, only to to fix a goal. But if I'm if I'm a victim of my uh, experiences I have and cannot really make a solution. I want to communicate in this piece in that way. I want to communicate in, uh, and use digitality in, in, in that way already when I want to produce it. So this is what I, what I miss something, because every good film has a making of. And we are most interested at least to look at that mm -hmm. when the film is ready and was good. This doesn't mean that the film was not important in its beauty and in uh, how, how, how good it was. But at least we are very interested. How did the things work out? And um, and project leadership is for me a, a, a more aware thing to look up to accept. Or oh, I'm a project leader, and it means the ability to document it already on the journey. And it also means that I can decide how do I want to create this process, not only the product, even the process. So this is what I what I uh, what I like more and more is my interest right now. It's more my interest to investigate the structures, how things are working out, and how teams are collaborating in the field of art, uh, in, instead of looking to the products. I've been thinking about digital art and especially you know, pro program programmable mm -hmm. art, so to speak, or um, programmable media in general, but. Uh, uh, you know, it really is an iterative practice, and there's always the backup. So the process is, is I mean, or, yeah, hopefully you're keeping a backup. So there is this uh, investment method that goes on. And 
you know, so, I mean, w one thing, um, just to maybe be a little bit provocative, I, I had a bit of a problem with the division between the digital and the organic. Uh, of course, uh, when, you, when you make it to two points, when well, not connected, then it's very pro provocative, because you need both to success, um, at least. But mm -hmm. it, it's quite interesting to look when you are in a process or if you in the, in the daily life, how do you use as a digital artist your digitality for survive in the daily life? And how do you communicate with it? I'm sorry, but I was in a lot of group in the field of art who don't communicate good, who don't use the digitality possibilities who, who, who you can find because the mindset about it is not right. They only use it uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a quite confused way. And but if, even, and you know, even the digital media itself? Absolutely, okay. this is what I mean. It doesn't protect you from to be a better digital communicator only because you are a digital artist. And this is quite interesting for me. So it's a communication, the digital communication is something which I were interested in. Why? Because a lot of projects are not working out because teams are crashing down. And in the main times they don't do it by physical meetings, they do it on the digital way. And this is interesting, why does this happen? Well, I think you know, at some level there, I mean, anyone can pipe up on this. I mean, this is my, it's only my team well, right now. So. You know, I mean, a lot of it had to go ahead. And my observation, too, is that many of these teams, I mean, I don't know exactly who you work with, but they might be interdisciplinary already, and they might be collaborating where there's no roadmap for how to collaborate. And then you have digital tools which are supposed to make it all seamless and perfect. So there's a problem with the tools pretending to be something that they're not, possibly. But there's also the question of how do you work as an interdisciplinary team anyway? So mm. it's like the, 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 the mm. problems are... Absolutely. Yeah. It's only higher, higher, higher. So yeah. because yeah. It's more it's it. getting more and more complicated. Perhaps. And, and thinking about software development in terms of a me, a software meant for a production purposes and, and managing a team. You know, they may have worked with the sample group, usually the developers themselves. But with their release in the market, that's not the model for everyone. You know, so the idea of any software being uh, ideal for project management or anything like that mm. is, uh, is kind of a misguided notion. It's a promise, but it, you know, it's problem promise. They're mixed together. Mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, I agree that the problem is embedded in the promise that these things are going to solve uh, you know, communication issues. But do you think that there is no digital leadership? Do you think that? No, I, I, do, I mean, I, I would uh, argue against making the division. I mean, I think there's, there's, uh, you know, there's a problem with managing a project when you know, maybe the collaboration is global. You know, like right now I'm you know, collaborating with a person in Australia and in the U.S. How are we going to meet face to face? We okay, don't. but this is for me not automatically only to make it sure. This is not automatically for me digital leadership. Right. If you use digitality to organize a team, this no, is no, not see, this I is not what I mean with digital leadership. So this is yeah. this has to be very clear. Mm? No, uh, yeah, yeah, but the, I mean the, the the network at least facilitates the project. How that gets managed is a matter of negotiation with the people working on it. And, and I and I think it's always organic people who are talking to each other. How much digitality is involved doesn't matter. It's always human. It's always organic, which structure the process. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm, I have pages of notes here. The people upstairs, keep it down. You and the ordinary problem. There's vibration in the air. Yeah. He said so. 
People <laughs> living under the, the vibration in the floor. Sorry, Craig. Something about uh, just a really a comment on, on Lisa's performance. The, uh, like you used the term ecosystems, which I thought was interesting because oh, that already has this kind of embedded right, reflection toward you know, mythology. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the, I mean, the presentation itself kind of had this sort of fabulous kind of thing going on within it. it was, I, don't know, I found that interesting. It just, it, you know, uh, uh, one question I do have, I mean, was this more, would you consider that the digital performance? Or is that a performative lecture? Because it, it, parts of it seem much like a uh, sort of performed manifesto in a way for a method that you were that you're working out? I think it's an interesting question <laughs> as well because I think that um, part of what I think we, we were trying to do by necessity is figure out how we can work together <laughs> and mm -hmm. to, to find, um, I mean in a strange way we came to this question of kind of resonances. I was so intrigued by um, you know your music and mm -hmm. hearing these wonderful voices together and then finding out that there was a you know a history about um, thinking about the Baltic and the sea and the song and it just, you know, so it, originally it was sort of like a, a more traditional kind of academic relationship thinking about, but as I'm sure some of you experience when the music happens or the singing, it's, there's something in it that's just very deeply kind of touching and we were trying to think of a trigger point that we could just start to think about working today and this kind of idea of echoes and echo, you know, we were kind of looking for themes and we realized after trying out various things that echo and and as you say, it's already embedded this echo. And then Daniel and I um, met separately to talk, and we started talking about these ecosystems. And and what? And then all of a sudden, I thought, wait, echoes and echoing, and and you know, waves and sound waving. It sort of all came together in that way. So when we, what we were doing today, if it wasn't clear, it's quite raw and quite quite rough in the sense that we're. I mean, the I think we divided it into terms of thinking the first part is sort of more of a lecture and the second part is a performance, but it is a performance of a strat you know, it is a performance of a strategy. It's a performance of a strategic way of thinking about how we can kind of combine this together and thinking about it's not the, the content, it's a method toward thinking about how we can get to this content in some way. So I mean I think I'm glad that you sort of asked that question because um, I think it, it it reveals that we are sort of struggling to work that. So I, have to say, I have to say, this is like the most interesting I, I could never have imagined. The children and the scars and the dirt and the, and the dance. So, Four, really. three. Yeah, oh, so who's going to perform the puppet show? That's my job. Yeah. The pictures now. Can I can I just yeah. say something yeah, also? Stucky Bill when you need it. Yeah. Just about about the, the musicians because I feel like too, given the format that we have, I don't want you to think that uh, Astrid and Chris, Christine are. <laughs> I always want to say Kristen are um, also just sort of just musicians. They're obviously evocative musicians. That's okay. But I think we should say a little bit about your the Folk Practice Academy and how you're approaching mm -hmm. the research too, because I think it's intersects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you talking about the, the projects? <laughs> so well, the projects are what, who doing. you are and what you do. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah, so what, we, what we're actually doing, where it started, is that I started this uh, leader project with the youth group. One youth group here in Blekinge, one in South Estonia and one in Northeast Poland. So there are approximately 30 youth and uh, folk musicians and pedagogues involved in this. And we've been going on since February 2011 and we were gone to the summer uh, so we were actually working with uh, trying to find uh, uh, culture connections and which, which will show that we are unique but also co in common <laughs> uh, we have some kind of a common identity but they actually this is but we would, what we tell EU is that we learn teaching the youth project management and networking <laughs> and, then, and then we can do culture in that which is quite interesting to see how these youth are growing uh, and learning and learning and uh, taking initiatives and uh, suddenly uh, lifting up a fin finger and saying, oh, I recognize this. I've seen this before somewhere when I was in Estonia, when I was in Poland. So this is what we're working with. And the next step what we're struggling with now is to find more projects. And it involves uh, uh, 
collaboration around the Baltic Sea and uh, trying to build a folk music institute that is uh, equal to everyone, which means that we have to place it somewhere out in the Baltic Sea, uh, which will be a digital platform <laughs> and not a physical one. Could maybe a physical one day, we don't know. Could uh, be a ship. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. But we're thinking and do it digital, we think it's easier. Uh, and there's all these questions about <laughs> digital, uh, telling stories, uh, uh, documentation, uh, e equal, being equal, organic, also things. Uh, these are things we have to solve to be able to build something that works uh, so everyone can participate. And all these different uh, people from there will be youth, there will be professionals, there will be amateurs, there will be pedagogues, there will be researchers. So many people already involved in this thought, so now we just need the money. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so uh, so that's uh, and uh, we have our Christina working together with her office in Ronneby, and she is a, a researcher in folk music, and I am actually an interaction designer, an information architect. <laughs> and it's so interesting to listen to all these creative things because two two or three days a week I'm sitting up at IKEA Communications being creative on how to sell furniture to people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about the same thing. It's about experience, experience, experience. So this is merging together in a really interesting thing, how we can use this. Uh, uh, and we work in what we call with the Im immaterial heritage, which is uh, intangible heritage. Intangible heritage. Yeah. Uh, and this is also interesting, because we don't have any chairs or cars or pens to to document, we have songs, we have stories, we have dances, uh, and you can't really touch that. So we have to find uh, metaphors and ways of, of gathering this and use it. Uh, and the only way to destroy it is to not use it. Yes. And that's also, a, it's, a, it's a challenge, but it's also very, it's yeah. like time, it's also a gift. I mean, yeah. the only way that we could destroy this is stop singing, stop yeah. playing, stop yeah. telling people. And, and Christine can tell you more about during dinner, about this, that, that when you say, well, you have a note, like a sheet of music, that you, can, you could collect that. Yeah, but if people don't sing according to that system, so how can you collect that on a note, on a piece of note? Uh, yeah, you can't, because we don't have a system for it. And we can record them, but we are set putting them in a context that is not the way that they actually... You, we talked about performance today. Uh, so how can we actually document that? That was almost important. It's only to use it. Make people use the, the intangible heritage. That's the only way to keep it alive. So that's our mission. Uh, and we think we're going to do it better than UNESCO. <laughs> Probably. <yeah. laughs> Yeah. Maybe we should have one, one, one last, last question from anyone. Actually, there's been something I've been wanting to say. It's, hot, it's um, underformulated, but one of the things I really appreciated about the two of you was the, the nuance, the subtlety of when you were louder and when you were softer and when you came in and when you stopped. And I could tell it was because you were you were in process and it wasn't a, a very strictly scripted thing. But because I'm reading a lot and thinking a lot about affect now and intensities, I thought that was such a really good example of the fine-grained quality of responding and subtly making changes that we're now demanding from our technologies and our technologies are promising it but they can't do it yet. <laughs> and I don't know if they ever will. And I've just finished writing a a paper on, yeah. on the affectity project and looking at affect theory there's this notion of gradients like grades and and what we're wanting more and more is the ability to slide across them you, you're doing that quite a lot with your work too so sliding across with with more degrees of subtlety and it was so nice to see it done live because it's like we are the masters of subtlety and gradients particularly mm -hmm. when we're very immersed in in the art forms that we do mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to say I really appreciated that. Oh, nice. <laughs>